actually refilming this video. I filmed this video yesterday. Uh, but I was feeling grubby about it, so here I am again. Say hi! Say hi to the camera! It's raining outside, and I love it. Hey guys! Welcome, or welcome back to my channel. If you're here, then obviously you're like me. You are a student, either in middle, high school, or college. I feel like if you're in elementary school, you're not really watching this. Either way, welcome or welcome back. Today we are going to be focusing on 10 tips that will help you to maximize your learning experience at school. How to do your best in school, how to get the most out of school. Now, these are all tips that I've implemented uh, starting in grade 8. I'm going into grade 11. My school starts tomorrow. And just keep in mind that you don't have to be perfect with these tips and that everyone's different so while some of these might work for you some may not. Now these are the tips here kind of go gonna go in order um, of how you can do them so the first couple will be before you start school or if you already started school do it then that's great. Ideally the time would be to do these first couple tips would be before you start school and then it's going to be when you st when you first right, right off the bat start school and then as you kind of ease into the school year. So the first tip here is to set goals and to-do lists. Now this may seem kind of tedious and annoying but this will kind of give you an outline for the rest of the year. And if you're like me, then the first two, one or two weeks, you're very motivated to do school. And you're like, I love school. Like, this is great. And then you just kind of fall off the bandwagon. And you're like, this is not my thing. Like, I'm stressed. I'm bored. And writing down these goals will really help to sort of, what's the word? Reinforce. It'll help to reinforce your discipline and motivation and inspiration because if we set these goals we're basically telling our brains why we need to do the things we want to do. Potato quality because I'm filming on my laptop. Just as like another extra tip for this one if you guys are interested on how to set these goals on how to set good goals search up smart goals like go on YouTube search up well you're already on YouTube but search up smart goals and watch a video on that because they do wonders. Also to go along with this are to-do lists. To-do lists can be very helpful as we tend to forget what we're supposed to do or at least I do and if I'm having to try and keep it in my head I'm like stressed about it the entire time whereas if you have a to-do list it's a lot easier to just write it down go to bed or when you wake up write it down and then you don't need to remember you can just do one task after another and you're not constantly trying to remember what it is that you have to do. So I recommend for this getting a planner. I have this planner, it's a school planner, so far I just have written my classes and um, I thought I wrote my bus number. I didn't write my bus number, I was going to, I forgot. My classes and my room numbers for this year. Corey, I'm recording man, can you please stop scratching and making a bunch of noises. Anyway, I recommend getting a planner, and in this planner, so far, I've written important dates, like dates I have off, holidays, and then this will also really help for due dates, and assignments, and activities, and things like that. If you've got like a project you have to present, you can write it down and look up to it here so you don't forget, as well as... Corey! <sighs> Little bugger. <laughs> Go, be free. And not only should you write down your uh, school to-do list, but also write down your personal to-do list. Pretty much just focus on, focus on what you want to do. Tip number two, take care of your mind and body. Now this kind of goes for several different things, eating well, sleeping when you need to sleep, um, making sure your brain is decluttered, things like that, and that will help a lot to help you focus on school because if you go to school you're really tired or you're really hungry you're not gonna have the same concentration capacity as you would if you were well rested and you ate a good breakfast same with goes with your mind if you got a lot on your mind if you're stressed if your mind is racing if you were late to school that day then you're gonna have a lot harder time concentrating and getting the most out of your lessons so making sure you're taking care of your body 
and your mind. That includes taking breaks. That includes exercise too. Exercise is great. Especially for school. Like you want to make sure you're keeping... Why am I hiccuping? You want to make sure you're keeping up some sort of exercise. Whether that's walking your dog. Or swimming or like playing with your brother or dance like make sure you're doing something tip number three is to set work versus play time now this might sound weird but in essence what i'm saying is you need to set boundaries for your school time if you're going to school and you're there eight to three then you come home and you're doing homework till nine that's probably not the best work schedule you're gonna get burnt out so you want to make sure you set boundaries with most people they go to work they work nine to five they go home and they do not bring their home they do not bring their work home with them. Whereas if you're a student, you don't really get that luxury. You've got homework and deadlines and drama and you bring that all home with you. So you wanna make sure that you're setting personal boundaries so that you don't overstep that, so you don't get burnt out, so you don't get too stressed. So an example of this would be like, okay, I'm gonna go to school and I'm gonna focus on school while I'm at school. Then I'm gonna come home. I'm gonna spend time with my brother. I'm gonna walk my dog for 20 minutes and then I'm gonna work. I can have two extra hours to work on homework. After those two hours, I'm not gonna do any more work. Even if I want to, I'm not gonna work. Unless it's like an emergency and I have like a freaking project due that I have to work on. I'm not gonna work because I need time for myself. Next tip. Alright, number four is making sure you have a good start to your day. My sensei always said to me and a lot of his other students that the morning is the redder to your day. Which basically means when you wake up in the morning, the way that your morning goes will most likely set the intention for the rest of the day. So if you're waking up in the morning, you're hitting snooze three times, you're rushing out the door, you're most likely to feel stressed and tense and rushed the rest of the day. Whereas if you're waking up early enough, you do not hit snooze. That's a huge one. Do not hit snooze. And if you're not hitting snooze, you're waking up, you're getting your breakfast, you're, you're calm and collected, you're getting ready for school at a normal pace, then your day is, is going to tend to be a lot more productive. And there's a couple things you can do to sort of set your intentions for the day. First one, like I said, is don't hit snooze. And I noticed this is really helpful for me because I hate, I hate absolutely hate waking up in the morning. I like doing it afterwards because I get a lot more done and I feel more productive, but I hate the act of actually waking up. I, would, I will sleep until like freaking noon if I can. Um, so this is a huge one for me is not hitting snooze. And that is the most difficult part of my day. If you can get up on your first alarm, you're already doing amazing. And even if you can't, that's fine. Like, just try your best. If you're hitting snooze three times right now, hit it twice. Get up on the second one. Like, work to reduce the amount of times you're hitting snooze and you're more likely to have a less groggy day. As well as this, in the morning, if you are if you find you're really stressed at school, then try and set, do some mindfulness in the morning. Meditate, journal, sit outside, get off of social media, read. Do something that will set your mind in a good state for the rest of the day. If you're waking up and you're consuming media or news, at least for me, I'm more likely to be overwhelmed. So make sure you're taking that time in the morning to do something slow and calming that will put your mind into the right mindset. Either write out your to-do lists, uh, journal your, your goals for the day, like I said, meditate. Do something that will help your mind get into the headspace you want it to be in. Number five, now we're kind of getting into those first, second days of school where you want to. It's mostly introductions, get to know me assignments, but this is still really important to recognize, especially in the first couple days, because if you're like halfway through the semester and these issues are still bugging you, you're going to have a lot more issues with it and that is to remove your distractions so I want you guys to start if you're working to remove your distractions just be mindful of what distracts you do your siblings distract you is it your cat that distracts you is it social media social social media that's distracting you is it the music you're listening to look to the things that most disrupt your work patterns and then work to eliminate them so i know for me media is such a huge thing that this that distracts me when i was doing summer school i deleted facebook i deleted instagram i deleted snapchat i deleted tiktok some of those i didn't have in the first place but 
Point of the matter is, I deleted every single social media off my phone. I had nothing on my phone. And that helped me so much, not only with mindfulness, because I find, especially on TikTok, if I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, then my mind gets very jumbled. So I deleted those and I removed that biggest distraction from my life. And there are also times where I just don't bring my phone to class. Because my phone is probably my biggest distraction. I hate to say it because I pride myself in not really using social media. But my phone is the biggest distraction. So find out what most distracts you and eliminate it. And I'm not saying forever. Like when I deleted my social medias, I could still use it, but I had to go in either through my computer or through Safari. Make it harder to obtain that distraction. Number six is sitting at the front of class, especially if you're in person. Now, automatically when you sit at the front of the class, you're gonna have less distractions because I just dropped my pen cap. When you sit at the front, you're going to have less distractions because the board, first of all, is going to be right there and the teacher is going to be right there as well and you won't have all the kids around you or in front of you chatting or uh, doing stuff. Did y'all hear that? What the hell is going on? Cat fight. You are more likely to have an easier time focusing if you sit at the front of the class. I don't know how to explain this one. You have an easier time focusing in class if you sit at the front. This is something I started doing in grade 8. Kind of because I'm a tryhard, also because I have really bad eye problems. Was sitting at the front of class. And it got to the point that I was focusing so well that my French teacher... Uh, the other kids weren't focusing so well, so he needed to create a seating plan, and he kept my seating the same. And he straight up came up to me and he said, I decided to just keep you at that seat because you don't cause any problems. Just because I was sitting at the front. That's the reason I didn't cause any problems. If I was sitting near the back, near people, I would be distracted. I would be talking to them. Tip number seven, take notes on paper. This is a huge one. There's so many people, and I don't blame them, it's so much easier. There's so many people buying an iPad, taking notes on their iPad, which I get. It's like, yeah, it's easier, but your brain is gonna process things better if you're using a paper notebook. Because first of all, there's just something about pen to paper. There's something about physically writing it down that connects it to your brain a lot better. I can't explain it. And then along with this, if you're writing things in notebooks, you're not going to write as fast as you can type. You're going to be writing a lot damn slower than if you could type. And you might be saying, well, Sarah, that's kind of a con because like I can write more I can take more notes but that's not the point you don't want to be taking more notes you want to be getting this information in the least amount of notes possible so if you're using this notebook you're gonna be forced to paraphrase you're gonna be forced you're not gonna be able to write it down word for word you're gonna have to use short forms that you're gonna understand you're gonna need to rewrite it in your own words which will in the end help you understand the material a lot better like it does not have to be pretty it just has to be readable it has to be in your own words because if you're writing down the board word for word which I definitely did from time to time you're a lot less likely to memorize that information number eight ask for help but what if say I'm saying paraphrase this stuff write it down in your own words understand it well what if you're saying Sarah I don't understand it like what if I don't understand it ask questions ask questions there is nothing wrong with asking for questions and when you're going into school a good thing to do if you're scared to ask questions is to not aim perf to for perfection aim to learn aim to learn as much as you can and this is I cannot stress this enough aim to learn not to get good grades and I at one point was aiming for good grades and I didn't learn a thing the entire second semester of grade 10, I did not learn a thing. I got good grades. I couldn't tell you anything that I learned. Work to learn. Don't work for your grades. But ask for help. And if you're, I know a lot of people are worried to ask for help. This kind of goes back to sitting at the front. If you're sitting at the front, it's going to be a lot easier for you to ask for help. If you have a good relationship with your teachers, it's going to be a lot easier to ask for help. If you're not distracted during class, it's going to be a lot easier to ask for help. And... I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't want my teacher to get mad at me or, like, upset with me. Your teacher 
is getting paid to make sure you understand the material. So go up to them and ask them for help because it's their job. And if for some reason your teacher's like being really rude or you don't have a good relationship with your teacher, find another teacher, find a tutor, find a peer you can trust, like find someone to ask for help and do not be ashamed to go out of your way and ask for help. And I feel like another thing that stops people from asking for help is that they're scared that other kids are gonna make fun of them. And if they do, well, it's really none of their business. Like, take it from someone who's going into, like, their sixth school ever. Like, I'm starting a new school tomorrow. Um, you are not going to see or talk to or care about the people you're in school with right now once you leave school. They're not going to care about you. You're not going to care about them. You guys both have different goals. You guys are going to be on completely different tracks. They're not going to remember you. So don't worry about me being made fun of. And if you do get made fun of, that's on them. Like, that's their fault. Like, if you're being made fun of for working on yourself or working on your own education, those people are probably insecure about themselves. And like, if those are your friends making fun of you for working on yourself or working on your education, they're not your friends and they're probably just jealous. Nobody doing more than you is going to criticize you. If there are people, the people who are going to criticize you are the ones who are insecure and doubting themselves. And that's okay, you know, people are going to do that. Like, don't look down on them for it, but just understand that it has nothing to do with yourself. Let them make fun of you because you're working on yourself and your education and they're most likely not going to be in your future where your lessons and things you're learning now will be and they'll play a huge part. So don't be afraid to ask for help, whether it be teachers, peers, parents, siblings, friends. Don't be afraid. The ones who understand and the ones who fully support you, your closest friend group, the people you're meant to be with, your people will understand. I have to sneeze. I don't have to sneeze, but like... My nose burns. Tip number nine. Don't procrastinate. There's another thing. I think I heard this first from my aunt, but I've heard it also from my sensei and everyone else. Is The saying goes, wake up and swallow the bullfrog. And that sounds uncomfortable, and it's supposed to be. But the idea is that if you wake up and you do your hardest task on your list first thing first, you're going to have a lot easier time the rest of the day. If you've got a project coming up, it's Sunday night, you've got to present it Monday morning, or not Sunday night, but it's Sunday, you got to present it Monday morning, you're stressing about it, don't wait until Sunday night. And if you're like, oh, well, I just want time to relax first, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get that time to relax because if you're relaxing but thinking about the project all day, you're just procrastinating and you're just, you're not getting quality relaxed time. So if you wake up and do your most important task first, the hardest task, the most task, the task that's eating at you, if you wake up and do that first, you're going to have a lot easier time and you're going to relax a lot better knowing that it's out of your way. You're not going to get as burnt out. Same goes if you've got to present. If you've got to present that project, now say it's Monday, Monday morning and you got to present that project and you are dreading it, go first. No one's going to remember your project. No one's going to care. Just get up there and go first and get it out of the way and then you don't need to worry about doing it. So wake up, swallow the bullfrog, first things first, do your most dreading task on that list because it will save you a lot in the long run. Tip number 10 is a bit of a harder tip but it's one of the most important tips and it's to pay attention to who you hang out with. I'm not saying ditch all your friends but there's a saying that goes the five closest people to you are the ones who influence you the most. I forget who says it. There's a couple different sayings out there. I'll add it in the video now. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. That's one of your top, top three, it is. three pieces. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Anyway, basically what this means is the five people you hang out with, you are the product of the five people you are closest to. So take a look at your friends at school. If you're wanting to perform better, if you're wanting to get better grades, look at the people you're hanging out with. And this goes for anything. If you're trying to like quit vaping or you're trying to get into like basketball, something like that, look at the people you're hanging out with. If all your friends around you vape, you might need to find a new circle if you're trying to quit because in the end, you're just gonna go back to it 
Not in all cases, but it's a lot easier if you find that friend group of the people you're trying to be most like. If you're getting B's and C's and D's and you want to get A's, start hanging out with the A kids. Start hanging out with the A kids. Ask them for help. Ask them for tutoring. Hang out with the people who have achieved more than you or who that have achieved what you are trying to achieve. And like I said, this doesn't mean trash your current friends. If your current friends, you know, they're close to you, they're your homies, that doesn't mean like go out and be like, oh, we can't be friends anymore because you have low grades. But start hanging out with those other people. Say like, hey, I'm going to go hang out with like Jesse for lunch instead. I've been talking to Jesse. We're going to go hang out in the library and study. Like, don't be afraid to work on yourself. Don't be afraid to tell your friends like, hey, I'm just going to go hang out with someone else. But you don't need to like disown them. Just find the group of people. You can have different groups of people, but find groups of people who are achieving what it is you want to achieve. Those are my 10 tips. I could probably come up with some more, so if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Maybe I'll do a part two. Let me know in the comments below if that's something that you would want to see, if you would want to see a part two, and I will work on a part two. Maybe for semester two. My candle, I love candles. I burned it properly this time, which I'm super happy about. I'm getting distracted. If you guys enjoyed the video, uh, comment below, like I said, if you want another part. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe if you want to see that other part. Subscribe, because if you comment saying you want that other part, but you don't subscribe, you're never going to see that second part. So make sure you're subscribed. If you guys want to see some of the other vlogs I do, I've done a couple other back to school vlogs. I've done shopping vlogs. I hung out with my friends. I've done some talks. Um, if you guys want to see more lifestyle content, uh, advice, growing up, stuff like that, make sure to also subscribe because that is what I post. Well, let me know if you try out these tips. Let me know how they work for you. Either DM me on Instagram. There might be a better place to put it because if you can't see. Anyway, well, I'll put it somewhere where you can see it. Um, follow me on Instagram or, you know. DM me on Instagram, tell me how those tips went, or comment below, tell me how those tips are going for you. If you have any other tips that I haven't mentioned in this video, put them in the comments for other people. And with that being said, I hope you have a good school year and a good evening, day, morning, night, 2am, whenever you're watching this. Bye!